Good morning. I'm Dean Wirtz. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Sheriff's Historical Preservation Committee. I'm here this morning with my buddy, Sam the Railroad Man. We're here to talk to you about the history of the railroad in shirts. Railroad in shirts is dated from 1877, and the organization that brought the railroad to shirts is the Galveston Harrisburg San Antonio Railroad Line. This is a caboose that we're in, which uh, is one of the most historic, iconic vehicles or instruments of the railroad of the 19th century. This particular caboose was used by the Galveston Harrisburg San Antonio line and traveled in the shirts in that year of 1877. We're proud of the railroad and its arrival here in shirts because it meant so much to the growth and prosperity of this community and all the others that it passed through from the east coast to the west coast. We uh, have a uh, history that began in about the 1840s when the first caboose was put together. It was put together from rail cars and uh, sort of hodgepodge uh, construction. And then once the value of the caboose was seen by the railroad, they began to manufacture them. They manufactured them in two different types. One is the type that we have here which has what we call the cupola here in the middle of the caboose. And it's a raised area where the caboose staff would observe the train from the rear to the front to identify whether there are any trouble in the movement of the cars along the railroad tracks. They would look for balance of the cars, be sure that the uh, wheels were still functioning properly and that the uh, uh, machinery that was moving this vehicle and all the others along the railroad tracks were still operating properly. Uh, it was uh, also uh, used to uh, provide the visual of uh, the landscape as they moved through the countryside. The uh, Caboose has since gone by and by due to technology arriving. It took care of all the things that the caboose normally would have served. Uh, one thing it didn't uh, provide when technology came by was the comforts that the caboose provided for the uh, railroad um, people of either the engineers or the uh, railroad brakemen because Housed in the caboose was office space for administration of the uh, railroad engineer or resting place for the staff. Usually there was a bed or a bunk beds in the caboose for long travel uh, for rest and recuperation. There was also a stove so cooking could be done and meals could be had and a table was set. Uh, in the caboose area for that purpose. So the caboose serves several different purposes in its time. And its time ended in about uh, 1940 to 1950. So you younger people don't have the memory of uh, the iconic caboose. So let's take a little tour of the caboose and witness some of the things that uh, provide a story of the history of the Galveston, Harrisburg, San Antonio caboose line. Railroad revolution. It was a revolution. The introduction of the railroad transportation in Schertz area in the 19th century was a revolutionary thing in many ways. The introduction of the railroad travel and commerce brought social mobility to citizens and expanded business opportunity to every community. The connection of the Galveston, Harrison, and San Antonio line occurred in the, in the 1700s, from 1776 actually, to early 1877. 
the Yeltsin Harrison San Antonio line created an immigration bureau to advertise in Europe, in particular in Germany and France, for immigrants to migrate to the area and towns of Central Texas. It also provided agricultural expertise to school the immigrants of the Texas farming techniques. As you're seeing here, the uh, advertising consisted of passes, this one in 1873, uh, which brought those immigrants into the territory. It was advertising in the countries that uh, included the uh, pamphlets and posters that promoted the movement of people from Europe to the Central Texas area. Here we have a photograph array of the history of the Church Bridge. Now the Church Bridge went through three iterations of life, if you will. The first was a wooden bridge up here in the corner. You may not be able to see it too well, but it was a wooden structure that lasted for a couple of uh, decades. And uh, it was just torn down and a new iron structure trestle was put up in its place. Um, that lasted uh, quite some time, and uh, then in 1921, a new bridge was built. Uh, again, a cement structure uh, across the Cibolo Creek. And this uh, depicts the tearing down of the old steel bridge and the construction of the new concrete bridge across the creek. Um, so, it's seen floods, uh, it's seen the old steam engines come across, uh, and so it's quite a historic, iconic place. And here is the name, or the date plate of the uh, early steel bridge, which uh, you'll see here in this next uh, photographic exhibit. Which what we see now is a replica of the old steel bridge that was in place for nearly a century before the concrete bridge was put over to the Creek. This replica rests at the visitor center in Schertz. Uh, and uh, the nameplate you see is taken off the original bridge and uh, a model of the trestle is placed there with a small miniature train on the trestle. Here we see the old trestle bridge with one of the original steam engines coming across it into traveling into Shirts area back in 1877. The photographs you're looking at uh, represent on the left the uh, meeting at Promissory Point, Utah in 1869 when the Transcontinental Railroad was complete. The uh, photograph on the right is one of the World War II promotion, railroad promotion photos uh, prepared by Uncle Sam to promote the railroads during that period of the World War II uh, encounter. The artifact you see in front of you is a replica of the golden spike that was laid at Promissory Point in 1869 as the Continental, Continental Rail Railroad was completed. It was tradition that when a rail line was complete, a golden spike was driven as the last spike to finish the construction of the rail line. To the left of that golden spike is a picture of one of the typical railroad crews that was responsible for the laying of the line. And to the right is a photograph of the caboose, the traditional caboose, and the story of its evolution. Here you see pictured the Schertz Depot, built in 1877, and responsible parties in the Galveston-Harrisburg-San Antonio Railroad line who built this particular depot went on to build Sunset Station in San Antonio. And as a result of this depot being built, the name of the city of Schertz became Shirts, Texas. Here you see the antique desk that was always in place in a caboose for the engineers 
in paperwork uh, activity, work of the engineer. Next to the desk, you'll see a model of uh, the Jim Beam canister steam engine that uh, the company constructed in honor of that historic era of steam engine uh, construction. Passengers cheer as Tom Thumb, one of the first American-built locomotives, charges past the horse-driven car during the impromptu seven-mile race near Baltimore in August of 1830. Although the horse eventually won, the tiny engine helped prove the practicality of steam transportation. Here we have examples of early 20th century business promotion items. Primarily calendars that the businesses in the Schertz area used to advertise their businesses. This uh, particular calendar is uh, 1976, vintage by the Cibolo Lumber Company. This over here is a 1931 calendar from Cibolo Meat Packing Company. And down here is a 1916 calendar by the Schertz Mercantile Company. Now this back corner of the caboose is the equipment room area. Uh, obviously there's been much more equipment back here than there is today. But here is a uh, replica of some of the equipment that uh, the engineers and the uh, railroad people used um, for emergencies and other activities um, during their travels. Here you see a photograph of the caboose that we're in now as it was during the decades that the Riedel Furniture Store was in being. You see the sign up above the pergola would uh, advertise the special sales they were having at any one time. And the major sign on the caboose um, was advertising, of course, Riedel's store. Now it has been replaced with the signage for the Galveston Harrisburg Railroad in 1877. Photographs that you're seeing over here are photographs celebrating the early history of the city of Schertz. And of course, cotton was king back in the uh, early uh, 20th century, late 19th century. And that's what uh, kept this community alive, was cotton growing and processing. This was the Schertz Cotton Gin, owned by the Schertz family. And of course, Buffalo roamed the territory before even the settlers arrived back in the 17th and 16th centuries. Here you see another purpose of the caboose. Uh, it was to transport the United States mail from community to community and also to transport the payrolls from the various businesses from communities to their banks and or gold or uh, other uh, financial uh, me uh, means uh, from one community to another into the banks to which it was going to be uh, placed. Uh, one of the dangers along the way was robbery of the trains. And so a uh, wanted poster was always kept in the train caboose to let them know of the dangers of robbery. Well, thank you for accompanying us on this tour of the 1877 Galveston Harrisburg San Antonio Caboose. This uh, project would not have been possible were it not for the county commissioners of Guadalupe County. Uh, particularly the lead in that project was uh, Jim Wolverton, uh, who saw the value of sending the message of how important the railroad was to this community in, the pros in its prosperity and growth. Uh, it provided the social uh, connections between the citizens of the region and far off locations. It provided the business opportunities uh, for uh, all of the communities along the railroad line uh, for uh, all of the decades that followed its establishment in 1877. So 
we thank the uh, parties uh, such as the uh, Shirts Historical Preservation Committee and the Cibolo Valley Community Museum Association who provided all of the decor for the interior here of the caboose. So again, um, we are very proud that we have this now mini museum uh, for many decades to come to celebrate the uh, history of the railroad as it passed through this territory of the Cibolo Valley. Thank you for being here today to see this wonderful mini museum. <laughs>